have my book. All right, where is my book? Let's see, did the oh it's no, it's right that. here. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> did the grandkids come over? Was a cleaning lady here? <laughs> no, it's just me. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much that you have a wonderful future planned for us. Thank you that you gave us your own dear son to die on the cross, that you had that plan for all eternity, that you would make and create us in your image and you were willing, Lord, knowing that we would fall, giving us a free choice, that you would come and redeem us. And Lord, we cannot thank you enough. Lord, this picture today, I pray that you'll just embed it upon our hearts. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I have, oh yes, a jar here. Can anybody guess how many little stones are in this jar? Well, there's little, 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 you know, marbles. Anybody want to make a guess? 60. 60, all right, let's, okay, quick. Okay, 60, 50. 40. 25. 25? <laughs> Marlene! <laughs> 75. 75, okay. 76. 76, oh, 80. All right, so does anybody, anybody else want to make another guess? 76 and a half. All right. Well, I just want you to know that in this jar there are, my husband counted them, 150. Wow. Oh, wow. So a lot more than we think. Now, what if this jar was filled with sand? Is there any way we could have possibly counted them? No. No. But... God told someone, as the sands of the sea, so shall your what? Your children, those that come from you, so shall they be. Now, you know what, guys? What it meant, really, is that it was innumerable. And then he mentioned something else that you cannot count. At one time, people thought they could be counted. Some people gave their lives to counting them. If God says they can't be counted, don't waste your time. But what is that other thing that cannot be counted? Stars. The stars. And you know, it's that they have found billions of stars in a galaxy and billions of galaxies. That is what, when we send these things out in space, they have found. And God has said to who? Abraham. Abraham, as you cannot count the stars of the sky, so shall the, your descendants be that they would not be able to be counted. Uh, <clears throat> well, that was a great promise. And uh, oh, speaking of promises, uh, God gave him other promises. Do you remember what some of those were? His name would be great. Now, did... Uh, God give this uh, promise to any of his descendants? Yeah. It was only given to Abraham. Does Isaac have a great name? People know Isaac, but it's not like Jacob, or not like Abraham, is it? In fact, the whole group of people feel, no, we're not from Isaac, we're from Ishmael. So I'm just saying. And so the great name was given to Abraham, but what was something else? Lamb. That, that's right. And he really says, I will make you a great nation, but in order for there to be a nation, a nation has to have land. There is no nation that does not have land. Now, there's groups of people today that may feel displaced from their land, but they're a nation, they're a group of people because they had a nation at one point. And uh, how could God give him land if all the land somebody else was living on? The force of wherever you trod, I will give to you. That's right. And who owns it all? God owns it all. And so he can give it to whoever he wants to. And he still does that today. And the Bible says that for the boundaries are set for nations and the time zones are set for nations and then that God will give it to someone else. All right, so a great nation, a great name, and what else? He would be blessed himself. And when you're blessed, it means God would give him great wealth, and he did, and you will be a blessing. And you will be a blessing to who? All the families of the earth. How 
in the world can that be? Well, it is because of one descendant. And who is that one descendant that because of him, even my family is blessed today? That is through the Lord Jesus Christ and what the Lord Jesus Christ did. But now God gave him these promises, and then he said to him, he says, now there's something I want you to do. What was it? That's right. I want you to obey, but what was what was the first command he gave Abraham? Leave the city of what? Ur. Ur. Why? What did they do in Ur? Idol worship. They worshiped the idols. God says, you know, you can't raise your kids in an atmosphere where everybody's worshiping idols today. And, and so the, he got out and he left. And God gave him that. Now, you know, to be a great nation, you're going to have to have at least one what? Uh, did Abraham have any children? No. By the time he was 75, he had none. By the time he was 85, did he have any? Yeah, by the time he was 99, did he have any? Nope. Yeah, it's getting pretty well up there. But God gave him the promise, and he believed. And so he came to Abraham, and he said, I am going to give you a son. And what did Sarah do when she found out that was going to happen? She laughed. She laughed. I know. But she laughed out of thinking, oh, how can that happen to me? I'm way too old. But what did the, it was two angels in the Lord. What did the angel say? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? And so he says at the time appointed in one year, Sarah will have a son. And so in one year, what did Sarah have? She had a little baby. And you know the one thing I know that they did with that little baby? Abraham knew he was going to be out of the nation. And that God was going to be a blessing. And so what did he need to teach, teach, teach Isaac? To what? Obey. And we're going to find out today whether Isaac obeyed or not. It's going to be a very important lesson on that, too. And so the Bible tells us, though, and, and as he grew up, do you think that everybody in that whole clan, and there were probably lots of servants and everything, what do you think they feel, felt about Isaac? Oh, I'm sure they loved him. You know, Abraham and Sarah was raising him to be respectful and kind and loving. And we know from Isaac anyway that he was a kind person. And um, so I'm sure that everybody loved him. Well, the Bible tells us that many years passed. In fact, there was about, I think, 23, maybe they take you know, Isaac, I don't know if they know exactly how old he was. But God spoke to Abraham again. And did Abraham love to hear the voice of God? Yes. Yes, where do we hear the voice of God today? The Bible. That's right. So when you come here and you love these stories, you're really hearing the voice of God. And so it says that God came to Abraham because he was going to test him. Now, you know, when God gives a test, it is on what he feels is important. I'm not going to test you on this stuff. That's, that's not really important. I'm going to test you on what's really important. What is one of the most important things to God? It is our faith. You know, without faith, it is impossible. Don't even try to please God if you don't believe in him. And so without faith, it is impossible to please him. And so God was going to see Abraham, do you really believe me? Do you really believe? Now, I want to say that God was going to test Abraham. But also... This is the only story in the Bible that shows God's perspective of what was going to happen someday. And so we're going to keep that in mind as we're seeing it. And it says, so the Lord said to Abraham, Abraham, and oh, do you think Abraham loved to hear from God? Here I am, Lord. Yes, yes, here I am. Oh, oh, I'm so glad you're speaking to me again. Oh. And he, the Lord says, take your son, your only son, Isaac. Oh, yes. Lord, thank you for Isaac. He, he is so wonderful. I love him so much. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll take Isaac. 
whom you love, yep, yep, I really do, and go to the land of Moriah. Well, the land of Moriah was about three days away, and okay, all right, we'll take a trip together, and oh, that ought to be really fun, you know. Yeah, I'll take my son Isaac, and he wanted me to show him what, what you know. And then the Lord said something that Abraham was, oh, he says, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I should tell you. Now, guys, let me say something about God. God has never required human sacrifice, ever. And, you know, the, the, the thing was the nations, the other nations did this. And so Abraham was used to it. We're not used to that at all today. And, and so, you know, Abraham, but, but, but if, if, if you offered him as a burnt offering, but what did you have to do with the sacrifice before? He had to die. They, they, they would offer little lambs, perfect little lambs as sacrifices. And he says, take your son. And so you know what Abraham did? He got up early in the morning. I'm sure he probably got up early in the morning because he hardly slept that mm -hmm. night at all. And he got up in early in the morning, and what did he do? Did he entreat God, beg God? He started chopping the wood. He started right in on obedience. And you know, when God asks you to do something, they say delayed obedience is really disobedience. And so we need to obey right away. It says he rose early in the morning, he saddled his donkey, he take, took two young men with him, and Isaac. And then he took the wood, and it says he went to the place God had told him. Now we're pretty sure he did not tell Sarah. This was between him and God. Can you imagine Sarah knowing this, knowing what was going to happen? And so he just went because he, 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 he. And I'm going to say this is why it is so important to know the voice of God. And, you know, there's people that have done crazy things saying, God told me. So you have to learn to hear God's voice. And Abraham had. And as they went, don't you think that as they were going there, that Abraham would say to his son, now son, God's giving you these promises and, and you're going to be a great nation. And God has told me that it's through you, through you, Isaac, that I am going to be this great nation. And I'm sure Isaac said, dad, you've told me that so many times. Why are you telling me that again? But Abraham wanted him to know, no, Isaac, it is through you, Isaac. It's through you. It's going to happen. And so as they went along, they finally came to the mountain. And so the Bible says that on the shoulders of Isaac, it says they came to the place which God had told him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes. Don't you think every night Abraham was crying? Dad, is anything wrong? No, no Isaac, no, no, it's, it's fine. I mean, do you really think he was stoic through all of this? <clears throat> and it says, he saw the place afar off, and so he said to the young men, no, 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 this is just between Isaac and I. We're going to do this. They didn't even know. And he says, you stay down here. The lad and I, we're going to go up. And we're going to, what do you think he said? He said, we're going to worship. You know what? Because in the Old Testament, that is how they worshiped God. And you know what they would do is they would take a little lamb. Now, that little lamb could not take their sin away. But that little lamb was to show them that someday God was going to send a perfect lamb. But that lamb was going to be a person. And that lamb, you know, people say, well, why did that have to happen? And then people say, well, why send people to, to hell? 
Do you want God to be just? Do you want God? Do you sometimes think, oh, you know, they've been so terrible. I, I hope they get what they deserve. Don't we think that sometimes? Well, if we have a sense of justice that people ought to get what they deserve, God has a sense of justice. God is very loving, but he's also just. You do the crime, you pay the penalty. But because he's loving, he says, but you know what? You have to, you've sinned, you deserve punishment, but because of my great love for you, I'm going to send someone that will be punished in your place. But you have to accept him. Remember what our verse was? But as many as receive him, oh, I don't care about Jesus. Oh, I don't believe that. Oh, I don't want to hear it. Well, but, but then, then you will have to take your own punishment. And so this little lamb here was to show them that God was going to send someday his son, who was perfect, who didn't deserve to die, who had never sinned, that was going to die in their place. And of course, this little lamb could not do one thing, but it showed that they believed. When we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we've done nothing. We just say, thank you, I believe, oh, thank you. And I want to follow you, you've done so much for me. And this is what they were saying. Lord, I believe someday you're going to send someone that's going to take our sin away. And so the Bible says that as they went up there, and finally, Isaac said, Father, you know, we... We've got the fire, uh -huh. and um, we've got the wood, and we've got the knife, uh, but we're missing something. What were they missing? They were, he says, my father, and he says, look, the fire, but, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb, a burnt offering. And many people think that right there it says God will provide himself as that burnt offering too. And you know, so the two of them went on together. Yeah, when they came to the place that God had told them, Abram built a what? An altar, that's right. And they built it out of what? Out of stone, that's right. And he placed the wood there that, that, that Isaac had carried up. And then, now who had God said was going to be the sacrifice? Isaac. Now you remember that how old was Abraham when Isaac was born? A uh, hundred. So if Isaac was 16, he'd be 116. If it was 122, whatever the age of Isaac was. Do you think Isaac was stronger than his dad? Mm-hmm. So when Abraham said, Isaac, I don't know why, I cannot understand it, but God has never let me down. Everything he's told me has been true. And he said, you, you Isaac, are to be that sacrifice. He said, he said, offer my only son, the one that I love more than anything else in the entire world. So Isaac now had a choice, didn't he? Huh? He could say, Father, I didn't hear the voice of God. You did, and I trust you. And I know all these years God has led you. And so, yes, I will. And so Isaac, we see how he had learned to obey. Because he got up on that altar. Abraham couldn't even put him up there. He put him up there on that altar. And then the Bible says that he placed the wood, and Abraham stretched out his hand. Now the Bible tells us in the New Testament that Abraham knew that if Isaac was to die, that God would what? Raise him from the dead. You know what, guys? We know that after we die, what's going to happen? We're going to go immediately to be with the Lord. But do we still want to die? 
I mean, you know, I mean, for Isaac, even if like Abraham says, Isaac, God will raise you from the dead. I'm sure he must have told Isaac that because it said he believed it in his heart. But Isaac is like, he still had to die. I mean, that was the knife. And so Isaac showed his tremendous faith, believing in God. And, and so the Bible tells us that all of a sudden they heard a voice. And it was the angel of the Lord. Now, I want to say that sometimes when it says the angel of the Lord, it wasn't an angel. It was somebody himself that came down. Who was it? Jesus. And we know it was the angel of the Lord because he says, since you have not withheld your only son from me. This is what the angel said. And so it was the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, Abraham, Abraham. And he says, here I am. <laughs> and he said, don't lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. I see now that you fear the Lord. Did the Lord all the time know that Abraham feared him? Yes. But it is for all of us to see. All of us to see that Abraham truly did. Do you know what else this did? There was Isaac. As far as we know, this is the first time that Isaac heard the voice of God. And Isaac had to trust God, too. You know, sometimes we, with our children, we want to protect them from everything instead of let them just go through things and, 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 and you know, learn to hear from God himself. And he says, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me, do not hurt the lad. And he looked up, and there, caught in the thicket, was what? A ram. A ram, the sacrifice. Oh! And he says he looked up his, uh, lifted up his eyes, and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. And so they had a sacrifice. Can you imagine? Just look at Isaac's picture right there. The great relief that God had provided a ram for Abraham. But you know, guys, I want to say that that son, Isaac, he was spared, wasn't he? But you know what? There was another son, and they feel that this other son went up the very same mountain. The very same place. This place was outside of Jerusalem later on. Jerusalem was not even a city at that point. But there was a hill there. And so this other son, oh, he had been a wonderful son too. He had been obedient. And here he is. And, and you know, he had preached and taught. And people loved him. But you know, there were some wicked men that were jealous. And he had come down for a reason. And so the Bible tells us that they arrested him. And they were so cruel and mean to him. You know, he did die on that cross. But there's in recorded history, there's no other recorded history of anyone that was beaten like Jesus and died on the cross. And you know what? Because... The way Jesus was beaten, even before he went to that cross, killed normal people. But the Bible tells us that that son, he was obedient, he was innocent. He walked up that same hill, and he too carried the wood on which he would be crucified. And you know, the Bible tells us that they took that son. And remember, Isaac was what? He was spared, wasn't he? But you know what? God says that he did not spare his own son, but he delivered him up for us all. He could not be spared. Could he have gotten himself down from the cross? Yeah. But then what would have happened to us? Our sins would not have been paid for. We then would have had to have died for our sins. And so because of his great love, Jesus died on that cross for our sin. 
And you know, what happened to Jesus after he died? He came back alive again. Isaac was kind of, you might say, given his life back. He did not need to pass through death. Jesus passed through death, a terrible, horrible death. Why, why did God cause such a horrible death for Jesus? Just want to make a point. It's a punishment for our sin. Because that's what our sin deserved. God is just. He didn't punish Jesus more just to make a point. He said, this is what your sin, the sin of the whole world, this is what it deserves. When you turn your back on a holy God, a God that only loves you, that made and created you, this is what it deserves. But then, of course, in three days, what happened to the Lord Jesus? He came alive. And how long was he on this earth? Forty days. And then what happened? He went up to heaven, and where is he today? Yeah, he's ruling and reigning. But you know what? He was ruling and reigning before he came down here. He didn't die on that cross so he could rule and reign. He died on that cross so somebody could rule and reign. But who was that somebody? Us. It was us. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. What was the joy? You know what? The joy was that we would receive him, believe on his name, our sins would be forgiven, we would be his children, we would live for him forever in heaven. That was the joy that was set before him, that we would be his children. And you know, Jesus today is putting out the call. And what is the call? Believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in him. Put your faith and trust in him. Accept the fact that he died for your sin. Become part of his family. And he's putting that out throughout the whole world and to you. And if you've never before said, Lord Jesus, thank you. You died for my sin. You were perfect. You owed no penalty for anything. It was my sin that was put upon you on that cross. I receive you. To all who did receive him, I want to be one who received him. I believe in his name. I want to be your child and live with you forever in heaven. And if you've never done that today, you certainly can. So let's just bow our heads and close our eyes. And then you can just pray the prayer. You guys just pray in your hearts after me, or you can pray out loud. Sometimes I say pray in your hearts, and then they all pray out loud. But you just talk to your Father, dear Heavenly Father, and tell him that you receive the fact that Jesus died. Thank you, Jesus. You died on that cross for my sin. I think as a free gift, you're giving me forgiveness of sin. And, and Lord, thank you. And Lord, I want to start following you. I want to be part of your family. You're going to be my father. But I want to do what you want me to do. Thank you so much. Oh, dear Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, see, God provided for our salvation. And who did he provide? His own precious son. You know, Abraham loved his son. God loved his son too. But what did God provide for Abraham? A ram, a substitute. And what did God provide for you? A substitute for us, but it was his life. So God provided the Savior of the world. And so, you know, that's our story today. And it's, it's really, like I say, uh, I, I guess we didn't bring it out that much, but it, it, it is the only story they say in the Old Testament where it was God from Abraham's perspective of what it really meant to offer his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He loved his son. It was hard. It was not easy. You think Abraham would have died in his place if he could have? In a minute. But that wasn't what God asked. So anyway, there's lots of things you can add. There's lots of things in the book. So uh, 
All right, and then, you know, to play a game, you can just put numbers on the back of your little children. And okay, we're gonna play a game, and then you know what? You come and choose choose it, and then there'll be a number, and that that's that's what you will, you know, how many points you'll get for answering the question. Okay, is there anything anybody would like to add? Oh yes, we I'm sad because we can't go into the school. Yes, when she was teaching us the moment of this, it just makes me feel so sad. I know it does, Ruth. And these kids, they need it. Let me tell you something. Um, I heard a guy last Thursday night, and he said, let me tell you, I, you can talk to me afterwards, you, but parents need to take their kids out of the public schools today. There's, you know, keep them home. I told you about my sister-in-law. Are we still taping? <laughs>